News Director has admitted a video clip of Australian troops firing from a helicopter in Afghanistan was incorrectly edited with audio of six gunshots instead of one. That video was online for two years. It's now being removed, but what will the government do to ensure Australians can trust our national broadcaster? Well, I think that report is deeply concerning. Uh, and at the same time, whilst I acknowledge that the ABC has operational and editorial independence, these are questions for the ABC to answer. Um, I will be seeking a briefing from the ABC on this issue because you are absolutely right. Australians need to have trust in their national broadcaster. And again, whilst I acknowledge the editorial and operational independence, um, this is a, a very serious issue that does need to be addressed in a transparent way. Just back to Instagram, so uh, as you've said, part of the argument for that minimum age verification was about online safety, but the Prime Minister also said that kids need to have real experiences on the football field, for example. Uh, and has responded that kids don't necessarily differentiate between uh, what's online and what's offline in terms of what is real. Do you, do you think maybe the social media ban the minimum age might hurt kids who rely on these platforms and not sport to find community? I, I think your question is really insightful because as we have found out through our consultations with young people in the age, age assurance trials already, people have different experiences online. For some young people, this is one of the only forms of communication that they have. Uh, they, in their words, are able to find their tribe. Uh, it ensures that some uh, kids, particularly children who may be neurodivergent, um, actually have experiences that mean that they're not isolated. So I do wish to acknowledge that social media does have many benefits, um, including for young people who might otherwise be uh, or feel uh, excluded from society. But at the same time, it comes with harms. Um, we know that uh, children are acting differently today than they did 10, 15 years ago for a variety of reasons. I need look only to the mobile phone ban in schools here in New South Wales. Um, as teachers have reported, whilst this was seen as something of a drastic step, it has resulted in young people getting out, being more active, having more conversations um, with other children, and that's a healthy thing. I think the key here is around balance. And as many parents will tell you, it has become too imbalanced um, when it comes to children, their exposure to the digital platforms and the harms that they may cause. Government does have a role to play here, just as industry does uh, as well. Government has had a role in the states in implementing um, that ban. But at the same time, again, in some of these discussions, um, teachers have relayed to me how children uh, during the day um, are fine when they don't have their phones, but when they uh, get back to their devices at the end of the day, it becomes a different story again. But again, I think this is about balance. And as I said last week in the parliament, the government is not seeking to tell parents how to raise their children. But there is certainly a normative value here. Uh, as a parent of a 12-year-old girl, um, I can tell you uh, the thing you hear a lot is everyone else is doing it, everyone else is allowed to do it. Um, and I think that normative value um, is uh, an issue that's being fed back to me, reflected to me very much um, by parents who appreciate um, that the, the efforts in this space are for a solid purpose.